Talk to us about the surging economic engine of Texas, Peter. Let's start by talking about what Texas is not. Texas is not where foreigners go. It does not have a reputation for attracting foreign direct investment at all. The idea that a bunch of Texans are going to get together and go to London or Beijing in order to put together an investment deal, it just doesn't happen. What happens is the Texas governor gets together with a few municipality mayors and tours states in the United States that are facing tax problems. And they say, oh yeah, you can stay in Illinois and pay 20% tax, or you can come to Texas where we'll give you a 20-year deferment and you pay no tax. It's kind of a jerk move, but it works really well. <laughs> that kind of sums up Texas. Everything is inexpensive. It's where the food comes from. It's where the energy comes from. The land is cheap. Mexico is right next door. It's got the major port in Houston. It's a financial center. It's an energy center. It's a manufacturing center. It's a processing center. It does all of these things. And during the globalized era, Texas would take a raw commodity like oil and ship it out or maybe process it into a refined product and ship it out and that'll be the end of the story but what is happening now as international trade becomes more difficult as security becomes an issue again a lot of these low value to bulk commodity plays are building up in texas and so the texans are doing the next logical thing they're taking a step up so they're not just producing natural gas they're taking the natural gas and turning it into ethylene and then turning it into the intermediate products that we use to make everything from plastics to safety glass and now they're making the plastics in the safety glass so texas is one of those places that any manufacturing that used to be there was almost incidental but now there's a dedicated effort particularly on the gulf coast for moving up the value-added chain and with every step they move up it provides opportunities for everyone else in every manufacturing supply chain to relocate to take advantage of these intermediate products that are now available in huge volumes. So that's kind of piece one of the Texas current story. Piece two is, of course, Mexico. Say what you will about the Donald Trump administration. The renegotiation of NAFTA was a brilliant call. It was probably overdue by 15 years. And because of that, we now have a higher percentage of local content, that's continent produced in North America, with the vast majority of it coming out of Texas and Mexico. Texas nearly trades as much with Mexico as the rest of the country combined. This has obviously been huge for automotive, but it's also moving into electronics and aerospace in a very big way way and anything that we can supply chains internationally strengthens them within North America. And Texas, against all odds, is now coming up against a new problem, labor shortages. And so Texas is just hoovering up people from across the entire country. And honestly, from the Texan point of view, people can't move to Texas fast enough. So that, that's kind of the second big piece. And then the third is the internal migration story. Remember, I said that people were moving to the West, the Southwest, and the South. Texas is right in the middle of that. It has the cheapest land and the cheapest power and the cheapest food of that entire broader region. And of all of the Texas cities, most of which I'm very bullish on, the one that is probably going to have the biggest success story for the next 30 years is by far Houston, because it has its finger in each and every one of those pots. It works with the Mexicans, it's in the energy sector, it's its own financial link, it's on the highway system that links into the East Coast. It's very good at moving large pieces of metal around, which means it's getting into heavy equipment. It's already an automotive. It has everything. And what we're seeing now is it's no longer just an energy town. It's probably already the third largest metro in the country. It probably passed Chicago last year. And unlike Austin, Houston, where it's the population growth is mostly from in-migration, it's kind of a tie in Houston between in-migration and organic population growth. So this is a city that quite literally has its best decades ahead of it, and it's already pretty good. When a lot of people think about where Texas's population is, we spend a lot of time here talking about it, it is that Texas triangle, that geographic triangle in the eastern portion of Texas that begins in Dallas. You draw a line down to San Antonio and over to Houston. Peter clearly really liking Houston's economic fortunes as like much of the rest of the Texas it continues over the decades to diversify out of just being all about oil there and what a prosperous place Texas has been it sounds like it's poised to continue to be 